He descended into hell. He descended into hell. What an incredible statement that is, which we profess when we use the Apostles' Creed. Christ the Redeemer descended into hell. In other words, love triumphs. Because Christ's descent into hell is first and foremost about love. The Redeemer's love for us. And the power of that love to go to all lengths, to descend to all depths, and to go through virtually every barrier to redeem a wounded, frightened, and alienated humanity. Christ the Redeemer loves us in such a way that he can descend or enter into our private hells. And you don't have to look very far to see the private hells that people are experiencing at this time, indeed for all times. So the love of the Redeemer is so powerful, so compassionate, that it can penetrate barriers of hurt, fear, or sin in order to enter into our despair, our hopelessness, and our struggle. Think of the disciples, twice, twice they're huddled behind closed doors, locked in because of fear and hopelessness, but twice Jesus goes through locked doors and stands in the midst of that frightened, depressed, hopeless group of disciples. And into that experience, into that private hell, Christ the Redeemer breathes his peace. Put simply, Christ the Redeemer can help us, can free us, can liberate us, can save us. There's no hell that the Redeemer's love cannot and will not descend into. Why? Because God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son to save us and to give us eternal life. The
The question is, do we believe it? And do we live our lives in a way that demonstrates that we believe it? Because in a few moments, we're going to profess our faith and we're going to commit to the belief that Christ descended into hell. And if we believe that, then love triumphs. Because Christ the Redeemer saves us, frees us, liberates us, and breathes his peace into us.